Hey everyone, welcome to NSC TV, your behind the scenes look at the National Sports Center. I'm your host, Scott Clayson. Today, we are in the Schwann Super Inc, where it is between periods of the USA Canada women's gold medal match at the Sochi Olympics. And of course, this being home of the US women's national team, it's a very partisan crowd here. And of course, a few weeks back, we also hosted another Olympic event here at the Schwann Super Inc, short track speed skating. It was the US Speed Skating American Cup. This featured athletes who didn't quite make it to Sochi as they participated at this cool event. We're gonna bring you that story in a couple of minutes, but staying on that Olympic theme, of course, the Herb Brooks Foundation has their offices here at the National Sports Center. Now, recently, they had a very unique event for them. They were had a fundraising gala down at JB Hudson Jewelers on Nicollet Mall. This was in conjunction with Omega Watches, who is the official timekeeper of the Olympics. NSC TV was down at the event, so let's take a look. so much. This is, uh, I'm really, I was so honored uh, when they asked me to facilitate uh, this program tonight. You know, I can't help myself. I start, start talking about the 1980 games and, and I get wound up like I was still there that night and i never bashful to talk about what it was like as a junior reporter. It's just nice to be here tonight. We've got some great foundation. We've got to carry on the Herb's dream and uh, people who are here tonight to talk about that. You know, he coached four NHL teams and he was in between jobs a lot of years. Uh, but really what he was doing behind the scenes, he was he was building the game of hockey. If we're really excited about what Frank Rantz is doing this year. We have over 200 kids involved in the program. It starts in October with floor hockey, and the students get to show up, and all the equipment is provided by the Rick Rantz program, the Herb Books Foundation. It's a huge honor. Um, obviously, anytime you can wear uh, a U.S. jersey or U.S. flag on your on your sweater, it's a, a huge thing. Um, I really look forward to this being my second Olympics. The first one I didn't really know what to expect and uh, to be there on that stage was a, a huge honor and um, I feel very, very privileged and I'm really looking forward to this Olympics. By the one guy who gave me that opportunity was Herb Brooks, he said more kids need to have a division one opportunity here in Minnesota. And so because of Herb, I was given an opportunity at a Division One school, so the Herb Brooks Foundation being here today talking about the Olympic Games and the opportunity that it gave to me is really special and uh, you know, I appreciate you even inviting me. So. Appreciate your time so much. We want to thank our panel, Dan Brooks, Robert Planahan, Brett Hedekin, Ryan Suter, Bob Suter. A wonderful time. Well, we never get tired of hearing some of those stories about Herb Brooks and the 1980 men's Olympic team and the miracle on ice. Well, as we mentioned at the top, the U.S. Speed Skating American Cup took place here at the Schwann Super Inc. a couple of weeks ago. These, again, were some of the athletes who were at a lot of the Olympic trial events in Utah and didn't quite make it on the team for Sochi. NSC TV took in the event here, so let's take a look. While we're here, as you said, at the Schwann Super Rink hosting our American Cup 2, which is a series of three to four races, depends a little bit on the year. Mostly it is a development series. First American Cup, usually everyone is involved. The second American Cup, the skaters who qualified for Olympics are not going to be here today because they already traveled to Sochi, so it's kind of the skaters right below Olympic level who is going to compete here today. All the American Cups are combined and each after each event skaters get so many points and they rank and at the end of the season skaters are all ranked together and find out who's on top and who goes to what program or does what next. They skate different distances, they skate 500 meters, 1000 meters, 1500 meters. So 
So it's just different in length, basically. It's a pack style race, so we have anywhere between four and six skaters on the start line, depending on distance. Uh, they fight for positioning, so it's a run in like quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals. So it's not always the most important thing that you have the fastest time. It's uh, more about placement. So number two and uh, number one and two, they advance to the next round. Uh, it doesn't matter about really the time. And then in the final, obviously same thing. It, the time doesn't matter so much. It's the placement which counts. Short trick is measured down to the thousands of a second. And uh, a lot of times you actually see that little of a difference. So the tip of the blade counts over the line. A lot of times uh, electronic timing doesn't quite go down to a thousands of a second. So they go back with the photo finish camera like they would do in track and field or horse racing and really put the line down to the tip of the blade and measure the time from that. We allow some body contact, but it's to a point. There are certain movements that uh, infringe on another skater's ability to perform, and we try to keep it uh, fair. So that's what we're out here doing. We're trying to make sure skaters can perform and everyone do their best uh, and keep all the races as fair as they can be. Since you used to race, do you know the tricks? That, uh... I know all the tricks. <laughs> No one knows more tricks than I do, so I'm, I'm out here being relatively fresh from being an athlete. I know the tricks and I watch everything. Well, as you can see, once again, short track speed skating is just a totally cool event. We are back here in the Schwann Super Inc. where the gold medal game of U.S. versus Canada has just concluded. Heartbreaker for the U.S. women's Olympic team as they lose in overtime to Canada. But we are always, always quite proud of the fact that the team calls the Schwann Super Inc. one of their training homes. And that is going to do it for this week's episode of NSC TV. As always, find us on our website at nscsports.org. Yeah, I always remind Robbie, I've heard Robbie say he's the best coach he ever played for, and I always say, well, Robbie, he's the only coach he ever played for. <laughs> And these guys always complain, like, oh my god, playing for Herbie was just a horrendous four-year experience. And I always say, try living with them for 20. <laughs> we have uh, kind of a bond for, you know, for being there. And, you know, I was just a little fat kid running around the locker room and getting in everyone's way. And I always say, if I wasn't there, they probably would have won by more, you know. And, <laughs>